I'm Martha Siegel. Uh, we're continuing with Tales from Termite Terrace and other tuneries. Today we have Irene Wyman, better known as Pee Wee, to everybody in the business. And she'll tell you all about her uh, experiences in, in the cartoon business. It started in 1930. Irene, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I started in 1930 at um, <coughs> Winkler's studio down on Western Avenue, just north of uh, Santa Monica Boulevard. And uh, I worked there for about a year with, uh, you think some of those pictures that I have there, the cartoons uh, with the boys' names on them would be interesting? The Certainly. crazy cat? Well, look down through that. There's no, these are caricatures. The oh, we'll do that at the end. Uh, oh, at the end? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the reason I was going to do it is to introduce the fellas. But oh. they were Ed Love, and uh, it was Mint's studio later. And Mr. Mintz is in the picture that I have taken in 1930 when I first started. And uh, it, it was one of those things. They brought all of the animators and the assistants from... Uh, New York, because there weren't any of those people out here at that time that were trained. And uh, so Mr. Mintz decided to move to the coast, and he sent his brother-in-law, uh, Mr. Winkler, out to open it up. And I went to work there in 1930 and stayed until about the following summer. I had heard of uh, Harmon and Ising on Hollywood Boulevard through uh, one of the chaps that had come from New York and he had decided he wanted to go into a different type of uh, work mm -hmm. in the cartoon industry. So it was, uh, he was a background artist. So I went up there, but in order to get away from a studio in those days, you had to leave and so I was going on vacation for two weeks, and I went over and talked with Mr. Katz, who was then the um, production manager for um, Harmon and Ising, which was actually um, Schlesinger's. They were under contract to him to produce uh, Merry Melodies and uh, Looney Tunes. And, uh, so then I worked there for a long, long time, and Bill Hanna was uh, washing cells at the time, and uh, then I became head of the ink and paint department, and uh, uh, well, there were so many of the fellows there, like Fris Freeling and uh, Larry Martin, and uh, oh, who were some of the other fellows? I know them all, but it's been so many years. So um, from there I stayed until 1936, or 34 it was, when we moved over onto um, Willoughby and Seward and set up uh, harmonizing, had lost their contract with um, <coughs> Schlesinger. Uh, they went under contract to uh, MGM. and. Uh, we worked there. I stayed until '36. Then they moved over to the main or the uh, lot with, on which uh, on Overland Boulevard, just south of Washington Boulevard, and uh, MGM built a building there on the corner of uh, I think it was Montana and Montana uh, and uh, Overland Overland and uh, it was a very nice building. In the back, it was on lot three. And we used to be able to go out the back door and watch all the stuff that was being shot. And it's part of Philadelphia's story, I remember, they did over there on the lot. And uh, we walked out the back gate, took the tram over to the main lot, and saw the, the uh, stars and so forth at lunch at the uh, commissary. And uh, I spent, uh, well, let's see, from 1937, 1954 over there. I was an inker at the time I went to work, and 
then I moved up to uh, animation checking and scene planning. And I worked at that from, uh, oh, about 1941, I think it was, until uh, I left in 1954. That was when they were cutting down from three companies, uh, three separate contracts. They had uh, Tex Avery and uh, Bill and Joe, of course, Anna Barbera, and uh, there was another, well, let's see, Mike Law even had a, a director's job at one time there. And uh, they were cutting down, and I was going to go back to uh, color model, they said. So I said, no, thank you very much. I think I'll try something else. So I left, and uh, I thought I'd collect a little unemployment. <laughs> I'd never done that. So I applied for it, but you had to wait two weeks, and you had to go out and make uh, rounds and at least have three people that you'd interview or talk to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at that time, uh, but I never managed to draw any of my in Social Security or whatever it was called, unemployment. And uh, then I got a call from, uh, what was that? Sutherland? Sutherland. And that's where um, Bill Melendez and Carl Urbano, and uh, they were working there, and they were doing technical pictures for um, big companies like Sloan Kettering and that sort of thing. And it was uh, for television and for a training type of pictures for those big industries, and they were much more complicated, and it was much more interesting. I really enjoyed it. They were uh, longer, much longer than a cartoon, and uh, took several hours to show it to a group of people that they wanted to train. And it was uh, fascinating to me. But at the time, Bill Melendez was thinking about going to uh, work or going into partnership with um, Abe Woolery. And uh, so he left, and Carl Urbano left. And uh, so I went over and decided that I would try and get into something else. So when I um, left, why, uh, as a matter of fact, Bill Melendez called me and said, come and see us. So I went over and I went to work for them and uh, started in, and it was on uh, Highland Avenue and Mary Kane had the uh, ink and paint department in the front. She had established that. And then she, she and uh, Aide Woolery had uh, worked at uh, um, UPA. place over the smokehouse. UPA. UPA. And uh, she left first and got it established and then they building back of the uh, building that she was in was a, sort of a garage type of thing. And they decided that this would be a keen place to have a big studio all on one floor. So they bought a camera, he and uh, <coughs> Aid and Bill, and uh, set up a shop and they had the animators and uh, they needed a sort of a temporary manager and uh, somebody to take care of the stuff and get it to the cameras and have uh, tests run and all of the stuff done. So they had just one camera, but before long we were doing advertising, like uh, beer ads, that sort of thing. And, and uh, uh, it wasn't very long before uh, we had to have more space and Abe went over and bought a place on uh, La Brea, and it was a house, and uh, then it led down steps to another big building that Mary, Mary Keene could move the ink and paint department into, and there was plenty of room in that building also for test camera and for production camera, and a small um, area for a little theater, and also room for the editing. And so they decided that was a pretty nice place. And uh, so we moved over there. That was in 58. 
and uh, we had quite a party, as I remember it. And then uh, years went by and we were so, uh, had so much business that Abe bought the house next door to it, which could be a joint at, um, to the one that, uh, with a little walkway. So we had another place for more work. And uh, I became production manager and I worked at that the last eight years I was in the business. And it was pretty, pretty tough because there were so many cameras outside of our own test camera and production camera that we had three or four different services. And they were all over Hollywood, down on Vine Street, over on Melrose, and up on Highland Avenue. And uh, it was one of those things, uh, a lot of times I'd get home at night and just be sleeping real good, the phone would ring. And somebody had made a change over the <laughs> what was on the exposure sheets to accommodate their own feelings. And it hadn't been taken care of by the directors or anything. And I'd get, have to get up and go out, go out and go to the camera company, 11 o'clock at night. And uh, that didn't make my husband very happy either. But uh, I did it. And finally, uh, it just was too much, you know. But it worked out for a while. But uh, Bill and Abe split up. It was actually, they had the, the Peanuts characters, which Bill did. All of the uh, layouts and everything, and Schultz was there, and we met him. And uh, he said, no, <clears throat> nobody else is ever gonna do my cartoons but Bill Melendez. And Bill wanted to be a partner with Abe, but Abe, no, if they were gonna use the business, then uh, it was gonna be Abe Woolery and Playhouse Pictures, and Bill would be second. It wasn't what he had in mind, so he went over and bought his own buildings, and Schultz just said, nobody else is doing these pictures. So it wasn't long before Abe was hunting for work because Bill did brought in a lot of it. Abe was not an animator. He was uh, more of a production man. And he had two sons and very good boys. One was an artist, the youngest one. And I remember he finished and they're still in business together doing that. But uh, my husband had a heart attack and uh, in 1957 and my mother was sick, and so uh, it got to be too much for me. But I was production manager for them for eight years, and then uh, I just had to leave to take care of the, my husband and my mother. And uh, they both passed away, one in uh, March of 66 and one in uh, July or August of 66. So that's been a long time ago. But today's animation is so different, believe me, I can see it. And look at the picture, I never look at a cartoon on a, anything that is a new one because they're so stiff. And even Disney's pictures are uh, just not really up to, I'd like rather look at the old shows. It's the computer business that's so stiff. They have to have the hands on to lay out the, com the work for the computers, but they just simply don't have what it takes to put the life into the characters. So here I am, You're right. retired. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. <laughs> well, I think that's enough. Do you remember any of the funny stories that happened in your days? Oh. Gosh, they always were playing tricks on each other, especially uh, Tex Avery. And oh, well, Tex was one. Uh, Mary Lou worked with Tex. Right. She, uh, uh, he was, or she was his girl Friday. Yeah. But I always worked with Bill and Joe, and uh, we used to have uh, coffee at uh, the afternoon tea hour, 3.30. And that was always in Mary Lou and my office. And uh, 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 let's see, what was, um, 
Mr. Quimby's secretary. We're Virginia Kenworth? Virginia Kenworth. <clears throat> I remember one time uh, Tex and all of the uh, animators, not all of the animators, but the directors came and we had tea. We always had cake and cookies and whatever was donated or whatever was brought in and coffee or tea. And um, we had it in the office there. Spent a 15 or 20 minutes having our break in the afternoon. And I remember one day Tex came in and he and Hank, uh, what was Hank's last name? Alan. Alan, yeah, Bob Allen's brother. Yeah. And uh, he threw some, we had the fan going because it was in the summertime, and he threw cake in the fan. And it just went all over. <laughs> well, uh, we had nothing to do with it, Mary Lou and I. <laughs> he, it was just Hank, you know. But Quimby, well, and McAlpin, who was the editor at that time, he made it a point to have Mr. Quimby find out the story about that. Oh, yes. And But he failed to say that Mary Lou and I had nothing to do with it. It was a prank that uh -huh. Hank Alton and uh, Tex pulled. And uh, so, anyway, Mr. Quimby came in and laid the law down to Mary Lou and I <laughs> because we had this, and we had nothing to do with it. And Mary Lou spoke up and she told him. But um, <clears throat> he didn't like it very well. So we, uh, but we found out it was McAlpin who went to Quimby and said, you know, this is the way it should be. They shouldn't have those parties because he never did join. He never joined in with it. He was one of these people that was, had the rubber soles like cats had <laughs> back in the old days. Remember that? And he could walk in the door without your even knowing he was there. He was a sound but, editor, but he took it upon himself to be uh, yeah, yeah, the, a snoop. All the way around. He always did that. He always had uh, everything under his thumb, he thought. But he didn't. He worked his way out the front door. Right. <laughs> I think um, Paula and uh, what was his Jim name? Jim Ferris. Jim. Jim. Yeah, Jim Ferris. took over. Jim was, yeah, his, Jim. Uh, was well, the assistant. Uh, I think um, McAlpin had to leave. What, didn't his help give out or something? Something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. And, Everybody uh, was happy to see him go, I remember that. Yeah. He was, uh, well, he was a little bit two-faced, too. Yeah. In that you never knew, you know. Yeah, like Mary Lou and I were say. completely innocent. We had no <laughs> idea that he was snooping around. It wasn't anything that, everything was wide open, the door, and everybody went by and walked around, and whoever wanted to came in. That was probably the least of things that ever happened there. Right. That's true. <laughs> but anyway, I don't remember any jokes particularly. Were you there when they were uh, filming on Lot 3? Oh, yeah. Uh, the Easter Parade? Easter Parade? Wasn't it Easter no, Parade? You're talking no, about? Uh, uh, yeah. Ray had something about uh, with um, Gene Kelly. Gene Kelly. What's the one in the. The, oh, singing in the rain. Singing in singing. the rain. They yeah. played that over until we almost <coughs> lost our mind. Do you remember? Yeah. They I played remember. that over, we were on and the, over and over. We were on the north side of the building then, and but I remember walking out and seeing the sets. Uh huh. And that one in uh, Philadelphia Story, and there was a number because they had so many um, sets back there. And over on lot two, which was across the well, across the street towards the main lot, um, they had a big uh, area there where they had a uh, pool of ocean. Oh, that was, uh, uh, I think that was what they called Lot 3. I think we were on Lot 2, No, weren't we? Yeah, that Lot 2. Lot 3 was way, way down. Way down uh, on Jefferson. Jefferson. And now it's uh, <coughs> all condominiums. Oh, is it really? But they kept the lake. Oh, for heaven's sake. You can still see the lake, but they've got beautiful condominiums. Really? And you think that you're in a resort. Hmm. It's so beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, they call That's it amazing. Rain Tree. Rain Street? Really? Yeah, Rain Tree. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's where they had that uh, 
beautiful lake. Hmm. Were, were you there at MGM when they when uh, Thornton he was there? No, no, no. No. That was Warner Brothers, honey. Oh. Okay. <laughs> what T was the name? T he. Do you remember? Do you remember the name T he? Oh, I saw him. Met him over at Warner Brothers. He yes. was working there when the, uh, I left. Um, when um, Schlesinger canceled the contract and they went over to Termite Terrace yes. with the ink and paint department and the animators. And Teehee was there. He was, the, he was the fellow who designed all the caricatures. Yeah. And, uh, well, actually, he couldn't animate. Oh, is that right? Well, he couldn't flip the papers. He used to cut everything out around it. It was so hard for the inkers really? to animate the stuff because all that would be left were these characters in here in the center and just hanging on by their feet just enough to, so that he could see. He couldn't flip the papers and get the feeling of the moving, you know? Isn't he had to see what was going on. But it made it miserable, I can remember, and they wanted us to be careful, you know, not move the papers around. Well, you couldn't sit with the, those things, you Isn't know, on your board. And, move your arms around without moving the, the papers, you know, the cut sure. out characters. But that didn't last very long. He no. didn't stay too long. He, he went to Disney uh, about 1937, and he, he became a director, believe it or oh, not. Oh, yes, I know. Well, that yeah. was really more his uh, cup of tea, I think. But w when he was there, uh, at, at the time he was there at Schlesinger's, uh, he had a little tiny sports car, a little Triumph. And he loved that little car, and he always found a place to park right in front of the studio. And uh, uh, he was so proud of that car, and he wore a tam on his hat yeah. hair. You know, he was a he was bald at the time, mm -hmm. and he'd drive away in that little uh, yeah. car. Well, one day the guys thought they would play a prank on him, and they took the they lifted the car by four guys, and they brought it into the recreation room. And so when he came out at 12 o'clock to uh, drive away in his car, it was gone. Oh. <laughs> and he almost had a heart attack. <coughs> and just about when he was ready to call the police, the fellas say, we'll show you our, your car. And they took him in the recreation room and showed him his car. <laughs> <laughs> and then they carried it out again. But that's, that's the right. kinds of things that they used to do yeah. when I was there. Right. Well, I expect there was probably plenty of that stuff going on at uh, Metro, but uh, I didn't happen to be in on it. <laughs> I remember one time Tex Avery went out, uh, they parked along the curb there on uh, Overland, and uh, he went out and uh, it was one of the other fellows that had a car that was similar to his, and Tex opened uh, his door and on the car, and then he walked over and he, thought just for fun he'd try it on uh, the other fellow's car. I can't remember who it was that had the other car, one of the animators. And it had the same key opened as the old General Motors cars. <laughs> well, those two guys stood there in the middle of the street and laughed and laughed. They thought this was so funny because they didn't even know. And Tex just thought, well, he'd play a joke on the guy and something. And you know, the door opened up for him and he was so surprised. And the other guy just was almost dropped on his face. Well, he was—he was a big but, prankster, all right. Yeah, he, Tex Avery. Yeah, he really was. He got into the Coke machine, and yeah. uh, uh, drew out all the Coke with a straw, and then put put whiskey in there. <laughs> and I have heard our, that. Our Goebel oh, got our the Goble. next Coke <laughs> and just spit it all over the place. <laughs> He, he did that at Warner Brothers, too. He did oh, that at Schlesinger's, too. He was always doing... He was full of tricks. Yeah. yeah. He, was, he was, like, really... He true. and uh, Hank uh, Allen, they were a pair. Yeah. Of course, Allen was a good writer. Yeah. And he even wrote a book, The Tall Man, I think it was called, and they made a picture of it. I think that so, too. That was after he left. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was quite a, quite a lot of fun in those days. It really was. It mm -hmm. was a fun. It was a fun place fun to work. Fun business. We had a lot of uh, had a lot of parties. At MGM. 
always had a good close relationship. I mean, uh, we would have parties for showers and that sort yeah. of thing, and went on for years. And whenever anybody got married or had a baby or uh, they got a shower, yeah, and it was always uh, the girls had a wonderful yeah, time. Yeah, we had a great time. I remember after uh, Earl passed away in 1966, and I had a <clears throat> party here at the house and had all of the old timers from MGM, and I had a room full. Oh, we yeah. had a real good party, and uh, but there's so many of the people are all gone now. Afraid so. That's, That's why we're sure. doing this. Yeah. We we want to we want to get everybody. <laughs> While we can still get them. <laughs> right. <coughs> Shall we just take? Uh, we'll just show some of your pictures now that you uh, that you have. Well, I think that he. That was for the start of our uh, organization on Western Avenue called the Winkler Studio. At the time, I started there in 1930, and later became Charles Mintz. And uh, they moved out from New York and brought all of the animation and uh, in-between staff with them and uh, put them to work out here. Mr. Mintz thought that it would be a good thing to start in Hollywood and build up from there. And he later moved over to Western and McCadden, not Western, but Sunset and uh, Santa Monica and McCadden and established quite a large studio. But I left there after working just a year and went over to harmonizing. But during the time that we were there, I had a birthday party. And uh, the boys were pretty good at making cartoons and characterizations and that sort of thing. But this was a little few of the cards that they gave me. That was uh, the occasion of my birthday in 1931. So I must have been about 26 years old. And uh, Nick Humor and Artie Davis and uh, who was that other guy? You uh, remember? Sid Marcus. Sid Marcus. They made me a birthday card. That was a very nice celebration. Happy returns, very good. And a few more car uh, names on that card. Crazy Cat, Kitty Cat, Ben Harrison, Manny Gould, Jack Carr, Al Rose, and Harry Love, all wishing Irene a happy birthday. The same birthday, 1931. That was a uh, This was in the entire crew from harmonizing in 1933. The picture is being taken in front of a big uh, state home on the south side of Hollywood Boulevard at Wilton. Uh, you'll see Hugh and Rudy down in the left middle first row, and uh, the last girl on the right front, the first row is yours truly, Irene. I um, have done so much, and I've done them for uh, Hollywood and Association. I have pages and pages of stuff that I've written about the history of the uh -huh. family and Hollywood and all that sort of thing, mm -hmm. all typed up and printed. I had HBO came here and did a thing. Oh, really? And they uh, showed it. Uh, uh, what's his name, Bob? Uh, Casino? Casino. Casino. He saw it in New York. Oh. That's the uh, start of a two weeks vacation for the first time MGM harmonizing group about to leave. Uh, the open door shows Mern Stevenson inside. On the right is Dale Lemon. And I am standing just 
by the door, open door, in the center. This is the interior of the ink and paint room at MGM in 1938. And uh, Bill uh, Tracy is standing at the window in the center, the back, and yours truly is directly in front of him with my back to him. This is the way they kind of crowded us in, made us work hard. And the funny thing out there, we found out that all those cells that we were using were explosive. And if any, if you moved it too quickly, there was a, a spark and one did catch fire. But that was in the days before they put out the uh, uh, new type of, of celluloid or plastic. They had to get rid of them. This is a post shot of uh, yours truly inking uh, on one of the productions. Uh, I don't see anybody else in that picture that I know for the post shot. I don't think I had anything else to say about that. This was in 1941 when I became a scene planner and uh, animation checker, which uh, you use the materials and the directions given by the uh, directors on the exposure sheet and set it up on your desk and went through everything and checked to see that the animators had done what the directors had asked. And oftentimes we find out that there wasn't, there was something that they had forgotten or they had uh, trucked in on a shot and uh, you took it to the directors and talked to them about it and said, check this, I believe you're not going to get what you need or what you want. And uh, that was in 1941. The next shot shows the director, or the um, production manager. This is uh, C.G. Maxwell, production manager of uh, MGM cartoon department. Uh, Mary Lou is behind me, and I'm in the middle, and we're just checking it out for a bit of publicity. Remember the script that's written on there? The script? Yeah. It says... Just read it. I've changed my glasses. I'll bet you don't make fun of my boots now. Oh, I remember now. Okay. Yeah. You, you might say that. Yeah. I was answering his question, and he said, I'll bet you don't... I said, I'll bet you don't make fun of my boots now. The boots I had on were a pair that I wore when it rained, and they were lined, and when I wanted to be exceptionally sharp, I turned the lining down over the tops, and that's what the checks are about. But he forgot my raincoat. <laughs> This is a shot of what 34 years in the cartoon industry can do to one. That's the way it left me. <laughs> and is this going to be... Pre can we try something? This is a shot of um, the group at Playhouse Pictures on the upper left back row is Aid Wilderay. 
then we moved to the guy with the black mustache, Bill Melendez. Then on to uh, the third lady over is Mary Kane. Then down to the second row on the end right is Bill Littlejohn, and then to the fellow next to him, Rudy Zamora. Happy little group. The party. This is a party at uh, Playhouse Pictures. On the top left is Mary Kane and Aid Willery. In the center, you can spot the lady with the dunce hat, and that's me. And over on the extreme right, we have the Little John. I think that's Marion Turk up there with her head sticking over the top a little bit. Anyway, we were having a party. What year was this? Say pardon? What year was this? What year? That must have been in uh, about 1958, I imagine, or 59, because that was the year that we moved over from Highland hmm. over to the new. It could have been later. I don't know as I put any notes. This was a picture of Aid Woolery and myself receiving an award from the Hollywood Advertising Club. The luncheon was given at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, approximately 1961. This is out in front of Playhouse Pictures at the corner of Delompre and La Brea. Uh, Aid is in the top left, and inside the cab is his youngest son, Jerry, and yours truly. Mary Kane, I believe, is over next to Aid. She usually was. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. Everybody can. This is a shot of an Acme camera, which in those days was considered the best. The bed of the camera in this particular instance has background and uh, cells on it. Uh, there's adjustments on the uh, wheels, the small one and the large one, controlling the up and down movement or the uh, trucking, as we called it in those days, in on various fields as designated by the director. And uh, the uh, animation cameraman is Howard, Howard Hansen, better known as Ole in those days. He's now gone on to bigger and better things. That's about all there is to it. At the end of the line, what's it only? This is May 27, 1998, and I'll be 93 in July 98. And it's been a wonderful life. And it's going to work for a little bit longer because I've got to have a hundredth birthday. <laughs> so let's all get together and celebrate. It's a deal.